guys, so today I'm doing a review on the Elgato ITV Diversity. Um, I've had this for about a week now and I've tested it and it does work excellently but there are a few cons and there are quite a few pros as well. Um, so I'm going to go over all that right now. So I'm going to start on the cons and then move to the pros as we're leaving, just so we can leave on a good note. Um, so the first con is sometimes, even though it is the diversity and it's supposed to have better reception, sometimes it does still have bad reception. Um, and I have noticed that on a few channels. There are alternative channels that do work, but um, for the most part, the reception is really good. Um, because the reception is excellent and clear, but at the same time, sometimes the same channel can have bad reception. So it just depends, really, um, and also where you live. It's going to vary greatly, obviously. Uh, the second con is the remote is just terrible. It really is bad. Uh, I'll cut to a clip and show you uh, what I mean by that, but yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot of buttons on here, and you would naturally assume that every button works correctly. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So as you can see on the remote here, uh, really only a few buttons actually function properly. The channel up, channel down, they all function properly. Volume, that functions probably okay, uh, functions properly. Uh, these buttons function properly. Um, but these buttons here serve pretty much no purpose at all. I know that uh, green uh, puts it into full screen mode. Uh, these work fine. Uh, mute works fine, but it just it's sort of a bad experience I guess it's the only thing that really let this product down for me is the fact that the remote is pretty bad um, And it's not really that comfortable in your hand on the Hapog unboxing that I did which is a PVR which captures your gameplay It had a pretty damn ergonomic remote and on the back as you can see it just says made in China um, Which is probably not the most aesthetically pleasing thing to put on the back and uh yeah, a symbol that says don't throw it in the garbage. So the third con is that it has very bad IR receiver. You could not sit across the room uh, from this and control it. The remote is generally pretty bad. It, um, the remote and the receiver both really are quite bad. Those are probably the two worst things about this product. But um, it is good because they thought about Mac Pro users because they did throw in the remote and... Um, the Apple remote obviously doesn't work with the Mac Pro, so they had Mac Pro users in mind, and I think some PowerPC users. Um, so that was kind of cool that they threw it in there. It is quite bad, but hey, it still works, I guess. So another thing is, I have a Mac Pro, so it's obviously pretty fast for me to export my recordings to get them ready to be streamed to the iPhone or Apple TV or whatever you want to do. Um, but there have been reports, I've only seen a few reviews on this unit, but... Uh, from the few reviews that I've seen, apparently for like a half an hour show it takes a couple of hours to uh, export. So that could be a negative. Um, but for me it's absolutely fine, I don't run into any problems, I just leave it running and that's it. But somebody recommended to leave it overnight and do an overnight job or whatever, but uh, for me it's all good. So, um, you know, you especially with the new i7 MacBooks, you, you're probably not going to run into any problems. Another con on this is that the price of it is quite high. I mean, it is cheaper than the TiVo down here, but it is pretty high. It's not the cheapest product. And also, they're kind of scabby with their software. You have to, uh, you got to buy their upgrades. Like, you don't get free upgrades or anything. You got to buy their iPhone software. You don't have to, but to buy, you got to buy the iPhone software, even if you've already bought the actual unit, uh, which is $5.99. I'll cut to a review of that right now. The iPhone version of iTV is $5.99 from the App Store. Go ahead and go to it. So you can see, it'll say here, this is my Mac Pro, and it will connect. Now, I have had to disable uh, my firewall to actually get this working because there are actually problems with the ITV software. Now, a lot of people have actually rated it just one star because of this problem that you've had to disable the firewall. Now obviously I can't show you any of the channels because obviously that is illegal to show you them. So unfortunately I can't, but this is basically what it looks like here. Um, all the same stuff here as you can see. It's, the software looks pretty nice. You can uh, go lower if you're on 3G or you can go higher. But um, on a local network you probably want the highest. Uh, or you can choose the lowest if you want. But over 3G I choose the lowest. And you can go to the guide here, as you can see. And if I want to go to ABC HDTV, 
uh, it will tell you what's on. Now, you also have to pay for the Ice TV subscription, which I believe is only $10 a year. That's a pretty good price. And you get like a Foxtel-like planner. And you can look through here what time it's going to be on. You can even flip forward a day. Um, I just went to the uh, 25th. And you can go even further. So Ice TV is pretty, pretty good. If you're going to be using this as TV, you'd probably want to get this. But uh, the software is pretty, pretty straightforward. You don't really need to know that much about it. It's not that complex to use. Pretty easy. Uh, you don't have to disable firewalls, so probably wouldn't put it on my main computer. I don't actually have it on my main computer right now because that could be a security threat. Another bad thing about this is that it does require a Core 2 Duo machine to watch the HD content. Now, of course, you would expect that, obviously, because um, you know we are moving into the future. We're already up to Core i7, so really, um, if you want to use this unit, you're probably not going to be the best using the PowerPC, but hey, I mean, it's... It's a given, basically, that to watch HD, you've got to have a pretty powerful processor. So, yeah. <clears throat> now, getting on to the build quality of this unit. The diversity in general is... I mean, it feels pretty good in your hands. It doesn't feel like it's going to break instantly, but it's not the strongest of builds being that it's plastic, but it is... I mean, it's not... It doesn't feel like it's just going to fall apart, obviously, but if you were going to be using this extensively and carrying it around in your bag, you probably wouldn't want this unit because it could get damaged and or broken or snapped, etc. Uh, they also give you a cap to protect the USB stick right here from dust and uh, just general damage. They also give you a USB extender with it, which obviously doesn't feel like it's going to break because it's got plastic around the wire. doesn't really match the whole Mac theme, though, so that's one negative, I guess, on it as well. The famous remote, it is really quite bad. Uh, a bit better build quality than the actual ITV stick, but that's probably just because it's a bigger, bulkier unit. Um, however, it, it really doesn't have the best build quality. The antennas, on the other hand, have excellent build quality. Um, they use magnets instead of uh, sticking and suction cups, and it's just absolutely excellent. You obviously wouldn't want to carry this around your bag because of the thin profile antenna. It could snap very easily. But uh, in general, it really doesn't feel like it's just going to snap. And there is a little bit of pull that you've got to do to move the sticks. But um, yeah, it's um, pretty good build quality on the antennas. I'm really impressed with that. And the cord obviously doesn't feel like it's just going to pull out. So getting on to the pros, um, it has fantastic software, really good software. Okay, so as you can see, you know, this is the uh, software here. Very nice, as you can see, the virtual remote is excellent, works great. Um, it looks very nice as well. You got your scrubber at the bottom uh, and your timeline, you got your volume controls and everything, uh, and your record and all that. You got your ITV menu. You can get the details, how long it runs, the date, uh, the information on it. Uh, you can go to your recordings, which is always great. You can see what you've recorded, and um, it'll give you a nice list there. You can record weekly as well from this, which is great. Uh, you get your information there, what your age limit is, uh, there's a scrubber again. You can go full screen pulls, you know, all that type of stuff. Here's some test of the uh, footage of this show, which is uh, Hogan's Heroes, I think. Uh, this is what it looks like, uh, unmaximized. Very nice. Uh, the picture quality is excellent. This is on a 1440 by 900 screen. Does look very nice. As well as the uh, remote, as you can see. Obviously, it comes free with the unit, ITV3, but uh, on its own, I think it's about $100 Australian, uh, a little over $100 Australian, actually. Um, another thing is that it has a great design. It definitely does fit in with the Mac. Uh, not so much the extension cable, but the actual unit itself is... It definitely fits in with the Mac. I'll see if I can just get that there. I mean, you can see it, it does fit in. Even the remote somewhat does. And uh, the quality on the antenna is fantastic. It all does really fit into the Mac theme, which is what Elgato's um, aimed at, I guess, uh, the Mac side of consumers. Another good thing is it comes with everything that you need. It comes with the dual antennas, obviously. It also comes with the software that you need to get started, the USB extension cable, um, the remote, which I didn't have to throw in there, but the remote, even though it's bad, they were thinking about Mac Pros, so that's pretty cool. 
and it's all very well presented. Even when you open it out of the box, it's very nicely presented, which is great of them. You also have the ability, if your computer accepts it, to use the Apple remote. You don't have to use the Elgato remote, which is great. You can just use the standard Apple remote, which I'd highly recommend doing if your computer supports it or your Mac supports it. Uh, so that's really good. Also, this can be used on Windows, so that's a huge um, pro on that part because obviously on Windows uh, you don't have to use... Uh, you can use pretty much any remote you want, basically. But that's a huge pro because being able to use it on both, if you want, ever want to switch machines, that's really good. Another pro uh, on Elgato's part, not so much the actual TV stick, is that they're kind of always moving forward. They have the iPhone app as well, uh, which you saw a review of just before. And... You know, in, they even made an, an iPhone app and a web app as well. So they are kind of moving forward in technology. Some companies don't, and you sort of don't get the full experience, but Elgato does kind of give you the full experience, basically. And the last pro is that it's very easy to use, very easy to set up. It's just all around, it's a really great piece of hardware. And overall, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. The reason I give it a 7 out of 10 is because... Those few things that I mentioned just let it down a bit. Somewhat of the build quality and somewhat of the remote um, just lets it down a bit. But it's an excellent unit. I highly recommend checking it out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more. Who is Zane Savage? I think the best way to describe me is through adjectives. So here we go. Stylish. Nerdy. Hungry. Very athletic. Musically untalented. Slightly funny. If you want to learn more adjectives about me, go subscribe to my three channels, Zane Savage, Zane Vlog, and Zane Comedy. Thanks, bye.